Beverly. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Kim? I'm Good doing, to be back. Yeah, um, I'm doing great. Welcome back to the show. Um, Beverly and I are in a couple of writing groups together, and she was on our podcast before, and I invited her back because one day we were talking in one of the groups, and she was talking about shyness and getting out and being out and doing things and meeting people. And it was such a great conversation that I wanted mm -hmm. to bring her on to talk about it. So before you share some of these ideas, tell me when you were growing up, were you shy? Maybe tell us your story with shyness. Yes, I was absolutely. I was shy as a child. And um, it, within my family unit, I was someone who always kind of stayed to myself, even, even though I had sisters, I was someone who liked to be in my room listening to music. And, you know, I was very dreamy, you know, and um, yeah, I used to just kind of stay within myself by, by myself, even as a kid. And so um, my mother used to try to get me to be out and be more social, but I felt this, you know, discomfort with it. So, yeah, I had a whole process of me trying to unfold and and um, start to um, socialize more in a way that was comfortable for me. And what I did, I started um, taking drama classes when I was a teenager. And it, of course, I had said on the other podcast that I like to sing, but I was afraid to sing. But being in front of people it helps you to um, drop some of your shyness. You know what I mean? Even though with drama, you're not focusing on the people, you're focusing on your performance. It still makes you more expansive and it helps you to drop one layer of your shyness. Yeah, yeah. that's really brave of you to go take mm -hmm. a drama class and then you had to perform in front of people. Yeah, you know, the yeah. main thing with drama classes is that it's a safe environment to unfold where everybody in there is uncomfortable trying to get up in front of class, you know, and, and show themselves. And then you, you know, you mess up, but it's okay. And you see other people mess up and it's okay that they're messing up, you know, so yeah. the, that's a safe environment. And then once you've practiced your performance, you're able to, um, show it to a larger audience, but now you've worked out all the kinks, you know? So, yeah. and then, and then you get a confidence that's layering because as you do it well, you're reassured that you did it well, you know, well, so I, that I used changes to be your on, personality. I, I used to be on drill team and I was mm -hmm. extremely shy. Like I would hide behind my mother. I was so shy all the now, time. Now, what age were you at the time that you were on drill team? Um, I was around 15, 16. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was I was terrified. But I went out and did these performances and I I would practice and practice and practice more, I think, than anybody else, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. But I I had to get that right. I mean, you're like football stadiums and all that. And mm -hmm. I'm in the front sometimes. So I couldn't watch yeah. someone else. Yeah. But I it I had, I ha I, th I probably had anxiety back then because I was so scared to go out there and do it, but I did it and it felt good. It was fun, but yeah. yeah and then, you know, you probably remember coming away from it, you felt different, you know? I did. Once you did it, you're like, I can't believe I did that, you know? I know. Yeah. 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 But you know, one of the long-term things that happened with me is that I went from that to singings and then with singing, you have to engage people. OK, you have to engage an audience, you have to get an audience to go, getting them up and moving. But it made me someone that um, I can be in a setting as long as I have a purpose to be there. You know, even today, um, you can get me in a room if I have a purpose to be there, if I have to speak, if I have something, something that I'm doing. But if it's just, you know, party for party's sake. Yeah, it's, it's still like, OK, I feel a little what am what am I here for? You know, I get it. <laughs> I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. I have to have a purpose. And and then it gives me a through way um, to, you know, conversations later or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You have to have a purpose when you go to a you have to have a purpose gathering. to be in the room. I, I never thought of saying it that way, but that's exactly how I am. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. just go chit chat about what. I because you, you know what can though. happen? No. Yeah, what can happen is that when you're thinking about the event, you say, if you have a purpose, you're thinking about your purpose. And then you say, I'm going to go there. And, and of course, your purpose gives you later conversations. But if you're thinking about the event and you haven't gone, you're like, 
there's no reason for me to be there. You, you're you trying to envision what you're going to do. Right. And, and yes. And being like, okay, hmm, okay. Hmm. But of course, when you go, you, you the event unfolds, but it's easier to imagine the event if you have a reason to be there. <laughs> I love, that's really, yeah, good words. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes I just don't go because I can't imagine that. I can't mm-hmm. imagine what, like what the purpose of me being there even would be. So yeah. sometimes I just don't go and I don't want to go. So I just say, I'm not going, but, but sometimes, sometimes it turns out well, but sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, I think that's a great idea with a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know what, one of the things that I realized, the reason why I state that is because I know that if that's my tendency, I say, okay, just push yourself through that. Because remember I was saying before, if you know your own demons, you can be your own antidote. So you just say to yourself, I'm going to make myself go. And just say, I remember when I was in business school, they said, just go and tell yourself you're going to be there 10 minutes. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Because if you get in there and you're there for 10 minutes, you know, of course, you're not going to leave after 10 minutes. Um, you're going to get a get a get um, into a conversation that you like or something's going to be happening that you like and you'll get caught up in the event. But just uh, just to get yourself to go, say, if I don't like it, I'll leave after 15 minutes. Yeah. And I, I have done that. I've allowed myself to, uh-huh. do that, to yeah, yeah, yeah. leave if I need to. I've never really needed to, but I do allow that. I learned uh-huh. that from a therapist when she's yeah. about anxiety. She said, mm-hmm. just say you're just going to go for five minutes, just walk in, go in. And if it's uncomfortable and you can't handle it, leave and just allow yourself and don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I um, also, when I was in business school, we had this class called personal development and they used to make us um, get up in front of the class and you'd have to pick something that you were going to present and then you'd have to talk about it effectively you know what I mean? So that was good too, because, you know, I'd already been um, acting and then I hadn't sang yet because I was, you know, 19 at the time. Um, and so that helped too, to, because now you're up and you're engaging people. You have to look at them. You have to present something and not, you know, your voice take over shaking or whatever, you know what I mean? And that so, sounds scary. Yeah. And that's how, and when I think back on it, I say that was just me doing things in a way that was layering. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like kind of like Toastmasters. I hear that that's what they make you do, that you have to have like something and you talk about it. I'm too afraid to take that even. I mean, I always Um, think about it, but I thought, why would I do that? I don't know, but it probably would help if I did that. Doing this type of thing, this is very scary. Oh, me. okay. Very okay. scary. And I, you know, I started doing lives. I don't that uh, three years ago. I don't know. I started going live. Mm-hmm. And I was absolutely terrified. Absolutely yeah. terrified. Shy, shaking, heart palpitations. And then um, something said, in order to do this and to, you know, make it better for yourself, do them 14 days in a row. So I did yeah. that. I because was you're terrified. desensitizing. You're desensitizing. Yeah, yourself. and then I got addicted to it. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I what am I going to do now? The 14 days is up. I really want to keep doing this. But then I started the podcast and all that, and I love this. But it is, it is, it's terrifying every time I do it. You know what? I used to love watching Oprah. And oh, me too. You, you think about um, how Oprah presented herself, where you know, certain things would go wrong. I never forget. There was a very funny moment where she got a a piece of hair in her mouth in the middle of doing an interview. And she just stopped and said, don't you just love when you're in the middle of something and all of a sudden it's hair in your mouth. She started picking it out. And, and to me, those moments don't take away from it. So even if you stumble when you're talking, this is what my teacher said. And I found to be true. Even if you're talking about something and you do it wrong, um, it's, it's just makes you human. And and actually the audience likes to see things that make you human, you know? Yeah. And I I say name it and claim it. Right. Oh my God. I remember. Say it. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I I remember I had an incident where I was doing a show and it was somebody's wedding and I had a whole band, you know, uh, playing behind me. And I realized when I got to the show that I had forgotten my shoes 
Okay, so what? I had my outfit, <laughs> but then I was like telling him, I said, well, I'm going to have to do this because I can't wear my my flat sneakers with this outfit. I said, so I'm just going to do it barefoot. Okay. So I came out and I'm, you know, I got the mic and I'm singing. And, and of course you could see people looking down like, like she has no shoes on. But you know, I had to get through the performance. You know how that thing of the show must go on. Yeah. So I just I just did it with the outfit and the and my bare feet and was just because it was summertime anyway, which made it forgivable. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you it was about the singing in that moment. And you just have to get through the moment. You say, I've just got the set and the set is certain minutes long and that's it. You so know? you didn't get up there at first and go, by the way, I forgot my shoes. No, you know, that would have been great, when right? I was in drama, when I was in drama class, I had a teacher that said, when something goes wrong, never telegraph it to the audience. She said, because a lot of times the audience doesn't even know when anything went wrong, but they will know if you stop and say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, just keep yeah. going. Now, I've had incidents where I was singing on stage and, you know, you have a moment of blankness where you don't remember the, the lyrics. And so you start scatting. Because you go, whatever you need to do <laughs> to get through that moment, but never tell the audience anything went wrong because they don't know. They're they're drinking their drinks, they're watching this, they're looking at lighting, they're doing this and that. But if you stop and say, "Oh, I'm so sorry," then I say, "Oh, I didn't even know that." Oh yeah, thank you, you for know. bringing to in, bringing it to our attention. Right, and I've seen Charday's concert where Charday was performing barefoot. And I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I thought it was beautiful. And you're you thinking, oh, did she forget her shoes too? No, you know what? She may, because um, she's um, she has a way about her. I just thought that that was a part of her show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was done on purpose. Yeah. You know what? This is the thing. We can get caught up, like I was saying, in being wanting to be perfect. If you say, I'm going to be excellent, not perfect. You forgive yourself for so many things and you look at other people, you don't judge them badly when they do something wrong. You just, you might think it's funny or that it's charming. It adds to their charm. I know? think so. That's yeah, what I think. Yeah. So yeah. give your, give yourself that leeway too, you know, Yeah. it, ma so, it makes everything more fun. So when you were in drama, how old were you? Um, I was about, um, I was a teenager, so I would say 15. When I first got into it. Yeah. Okay. And then you did you know? it all through high school. And then I did it all through high school. Yeah. And oh. then I, I stopped after high school, but I did very well in it. You know what I mean? We, we were part of um, a thing that we did at the garden state art center. And um, we won an award for this little one act play that we did for um, me and one other person It's called soul gone home. Oh, and really? It was fun. That was really fun. Yeah, so wow. you have to do those things where you get out of here. <laughs> do you ever want to do that now? Like do community? You know, I have done um, extras work, but no, I went, once I started the singing, I um, focused more on the singing because really I wanted to sing, but yeah. the acting put me in front of an audience. So I felt like I was cheating almost like, ah, oh, yay, I'm in front of an audience, but once I started singing, I was like, okay, I don't need to do the acting thing because the acting shuts out the audience and you focus the, on the performance. But once I started singing, that was the real deal of what I wanted to do, you know? So okay. I left that behind. Mm -hmm. And you, when you sang, you sang by yourself or with your sister or? I or sang with my sister. I sang by myself. I also sang as part of singing groups. Like we would, you know, be girls singing in the front and a band playing behind us you know yeah so that was good that was wonderful yeah i did chorus in high school okay. was it in high school or junior high i don't know it was one of those and um that was that was okay although i wanted to be in it and i was too scared to audition so she made me an alto and i'm thinking to myself i'm not an alto i'm not an alto and they said well if you want to be a soprano you're going to have to come up here and you're going to have to sing by yourself uh -huh around okay. the, the piano, whatever. There were only a couple people in the room. And I just thought, oh my God, I really want this, but how am I going to do this? And I did it. And she goes, okay, you're a soprano. But oh. I, we went on tours. I mean, we did went on bus tours to other schools and we performed, but it was a group. It wasn't mm. like I was by myself. There were 30 or 40 other people with me. 
So that made it easier. I'd love to do that again. Yeah, I've sang by myself, but I've also sang with groups, you know, and, and you know, that's the thing, doing things in, in stages again, where I started out, I was singing in a group, and then later on, I sang by myself. You know? And then do you sing at all now? D- not just in the shower. I mean, do you sing? Um, no, I don't do performances at all anymore. I've kind of gotten away from that, be- mainly because, um, and it's just my view, I looked at the industry and it's like, you don't know what, how the industry is unfolding right now, how, what the throughway is in there. You know, it's kind of strange, like they're doing downloads, but you know, everything right. you used to know, you tried to get a deal with a record company and the record company, the business was this. Now it's it's shifted. You don't even know what the behind the business is. I'm I'm sure there are people who do understand how it works now, but I'm yeah. not sure how it works now. <laughs> what about singing for fun? Oh uh, no, I just sing around the house. You just sing. sing <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's what I do. I would like to be part of a group. I actually inquired. Can you believe it? Okay. I inquired about it because there was some daytime group. That was oh, going yeah. on. And so I was like, so when does it meet? And then she said, oh, it, it's it's disbanded. I went, oh, you're kidding. I finally find something and it's, uh. Do you ever think that you would try to sing by yourself? Uh, uh no. No. Uh, she said, uh, uh no. <laughs> no. See, that's why we have you here. Help me. Um, help, help us. Let's talk about how to overcome shyness. Like, so do you have any daily practices or routines that you do or some routine that you do before you go do like, like uh, you do readings, you do poetry readings. Mm-hmm. How do you get up the nerve to do that? Well, it probably doesn't bother you anymore, but when you first, how did you first start doing that? I probably asked you this on the last interview, but remind us, how did you first start doing that? And how the heck did you get over your shyness doing that? Well, you know, this is the thing. Once you sang, on stage, you're only you're not only singing, you're engaging with the audience. So right. for me, having to sing in front of people was was much harder than having to talk. You know what I mean? Because you have a whole um, set, um, you have a whole performance that you have to do. But reading is much much easier. So really? that's less much less scary than having to really? be a singer and you're trying to carry a performance. Yeah. Well, because when singing, you've memorized all the words mostly. Yeah. So I think right. that would be easier because you've memorized, unless you forget the words for some reason. But but then when you're reading something, you're reading it live and you haven't memorized right. anything. And that's easier but you know, for you. Yeah. But, but you know, this is the thing. When you're going to do a performance and you know that this is going to be your set, like when I'm doing a feature and you say, I have 20 minutes. You can map out exactly what you're going to read, exactly the order that you're going to read it. So you you can practice your reading and time it, make sure that you have it timed. So it's kind of like um, your performance when you're doing your music. It's just you're going to be reading because when you're doing a feature, you don't want to go over. So that's the reason why I practice it and time it. I know which how long it's going to re- uh, take to read each poem. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's, that's much easier than singing, you know? Okay. So you, do you you'll have- get up in the front of people and, and, you know, you're just, you're just reading what's already been written. Yeah. You know? and some of them, I, I, um, um, p- uh, commit them to memory just for fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. And so do, so do people in the audience just listen or do you engage with them before and after? Well, I tend to talk, like, if you look at my readings online, you can see that I may say a few things in between and it's just talking about the poem that I'm going to read or giving a little bit of background on um, how it was um, inspired or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And do people ask you questions or do you allow that before? Or no, after? well, usually the talking happens when it's completely done and, you know, you can talk to people on the side. On the but side, but not when you're on the For the most stage. part, sometimes I, I did one reading where they did an interview with me before the reading happened. So he, it was just a little short interview and then you go ahead and do your reading. But but for wow. the most part, the engaging with the audience happens after the reading is complete, done, and the whole presentation's over. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. And well, speaking of readings, do you have yeah. a couple to share with us today? Yes, I do. I was going to share my poem that was in um, California Quarterly. This is the one mm, that mm -hmm. I um, edited. And the my poem in here is called Underwater. And I think it speaks to just being um, socially uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. Grabbed by obligations, my destination pulled as I pushed to arrive. The sidewalk called me names as I rushed down its irrational edge. This was better than the sound of sirens in the distance and the sharp cough of strangers. Some wore masks and others a naked face with veiled intentions. Uncomfortable in the dry, empty, at close range, cold chill that comes from tired faces. When I place my needs where they don't belong, it blooms a season of the polite, you're unwelcomed. One of these days, I'll get around to me, be less pout and hear more while wrapped tight in the arms of my own care. As I run for the train, I know that day will come. <laughs> and that's just talking about being a person that you may be out and you'd feel like you don't know how to connect. Right. You're, you feel just perpetually alone. Yes. You're you're looking at people you don't think they like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that all comes from your internal thinking. It's it's not really the world. It's what you're carrying. Yeah. If we could just learn not to care what anybody thinks. Right. I'm learning yeah. more of that now. And I am more my authentic self than I have ever been. Yeah. Um, and I thought, gosh, why didn't I act this way before? Yeah. I'm so worried all these years to speak up and say anything. I'm so shy. And, yeah. And, and um, the world's not judging you at all. It's, it's always our imaginings. Cause I think to myself, the world didn't change it was just me changing within that world and saying, well, you know, I'm going to relax into it and not see, know that people are not looking at you and, and measuring you negatively. You know what I mean? It, that's yeah. just your internal thing. Yeah. And how, how do you get people to understand that and to really believe it? it, it you know, what? for me, it was a repetition in my own thinking. You know, you okay, can talk just talk about that. Yeah, just just say something different to yourself, you know, um, like like the the example of when you're going to go and you're you're going to go out to an event, you can catch yourself in a simple act of saying negative things about it. And then you start to act on those things you're saying to yourself as if it's true. Right. And you can apply that to absolutely anything. If you want to write something, it can cause you to have writer's block. And it's all what you're saying to yourself in the moment. Yeah. You know, to just lighten up, just say <laughs> other people are not perfect. Uh, I don't have to be perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I always like to look at people that you think of how um, when you're looking at people and you see them being relaxed, it you like that in other people. Know that they'll yes. like that in you too. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Relaxation is beautiful. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to. Or, write or, a poem or, about that. I like relaxation that. is beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Then you can come back again and then read that. Yes. And you know, I have one other one. Oh well, there are two of them in here. They're yeah, short. let's hear it. Very short. This was a um anthology that came out in 2015 and it's called Then oh, and Now. That's a beautiful cover. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Nice. Very art. beautiful. I love it's, all it's the colors. It's put out by Sadie Girl Press. And that is one. really cool. Yeah. It's Looking still at her open. reflection. Yeah, right. isn't that gorgeous? That is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, now in this one, they had us do, it was like a themed anthology where you were talking about yourself as a young person and then versus yourself now. And what they did was they had uh, a piece that was small, smaller, that was shorter. It was something that I wrote. And it's the old picture of me in there. Oh, that was, that's you? That's me when I was 19. Oh, cute yeah that. so this poem reflects me then and then me reflecting on me so the first oh, one is i called, love it the first one is called crawl fitting but not fitting hard corners and lost patterns there is a backside to forever 
in the torn pieces I have scattered. I crawl until I walk among uncertain creatures, end of school days, avenues paved to a new set of teachers. Because you know, everything in life teaches you. Right. And then I took one of the lines that was in there and made another poem. And it, okay. the poem was called Backside of Forever. Okay. Then I longed for freedom, but dreaded adulthood spotlight on my face. Tolerated the melt of simple days that played like background music at a circus. I fought the prospect of tugging weight of obligated life barefoot up the hill. I burned as a lone birthday candle in the cold gymnasium of earth, feared being the most brave among sensible cowards, or first among all that failed. Now I conjure the winds of today. I fan the heat of what can be. I give a steady pressing motion right at the very edge of me. The next unlikely move I claim as my direction. I love all without a backward glance into yesterday's reflection. Yes. Yeah, so check That's that beautiful. out. Because this is still available on Amazon. Then and now, conversations with old friends. Yeah. Wow. And, and is, that, is by, that your uh, book? Or are you no, in this was book? an anthology. So there's a lot of different poets in there too. I see. Oh, yeah, and it was a themed anthology. So when we submitted, okay. we had to submit um, a picture of ourselves and something reflecting us as younger people, and oh. then us, you know, into the now, which was 2015. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. What a wonderful I, I book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. need to put a link to that in the show notes. Yes. Yeah. It's in, it's on Amazon. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Sarah Thursday would be very happy if you did. <laughs> Sarah Thursday. That's yeah. her name. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, the, that's the, the woman who edited it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. And if you could put a link to California quarterly too. Yeah, of course yeah. I will. Yeah. That's so or beautiful. send, send me the links and I will include them. I will. I yeah. will. Yeah. Cause this is a spring issue. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's did, a lot of poems in there too. Yeah. That's great. Lots of reading to do. Um, how can somebody deal with setbacks when trying to overcome shyness or become more independent? Well, you know what? Um, setbacks, it, you have to realize everybody's experiencing setbacks. If you could just realize that everything that you're going through, other people are going through those challenges too. You really won't feel so alone at all. Okay. You know, I, I'm, I was saying this before, and I always tell people this, I love reading biographies because it's, it, you, you'd be amazed when you look at the people who have phenomenal success, the yeah, things where they, they came went from. through, yeah, yeah, all of the things that they went through, the nuts and bolts and, and um, all the setbacks that they had. And you say, wow, if they climbed over that, I know I can climb over the things that I go through. Yeah. Because a lot of times when you get really upset about a setback, it's because you think you're going through it and no one else has been through it. Right. You know, yeah. but, but you can be reassured and say, well, I'm not alone in it, you know? Yeah. And then, and then move on. Right. Yeah. And that's the reason why I, I read that poem um, called next in my last one, because um, yes, that was all, all you do is just say next. Well, what am I going to do next? Let me try the next thing and realize that rejection is a part of any part of expansion, anything yeah. you're doing. When yeah. you're pushing out into the world, there's going to be people that don't understand your vision. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, I had um, my, I have a, uh, what is it? A short story that just recently got accepted, but that short story has been rejected so many times. You know, I remember you talking about this, like, oh, I've submitted it like 20 times, but I'm going to submit yeah. it here and nothing stops you. I love that. Yeah. You, you just have to keep going because I, I remember um, Mark Victor Hansen said, um, <laughs> if somebody is saying no, it's just that they didn't hear you. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. And, you know, he um, was the one who put together chicken soup for the soul. Oh, Had, okay. Um, yes, that's right. That can feel. Yeah. Yes. But that got rejected quite a bit before it, it was did. accepted. Mm -hmm. <gasps> yeah, it got rejected. That whole idea of chicken soup for the soul. 
Oh, I didn't know that. And there's oh, many, yeah. there's many yeah. books. And that has really taken off. It was, it turned into a whole franchise, but there was people and, you know, the Harry Potter, the story was rejected over and over wow. by publishers before it was accepted. Now look at the idea of that. That was a wonderful idea, but somebody was looking at it saying, ah, uh, no. Nah. Yeah. You know, so you got to find the right. just didn't hear me. <laughs> yeah. You got to find the right people that match your vision and believe in your vision. Know that your vision counts because there's so many people that had visions prior to you and they were committed to it. And that's yes. what helped their unfoldment. But rejection take- is part of it because everybody yeah. else doesn't see your vision. You got to believe in it strong enough, you know? Yeah. It does yeah. take commitment. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So what about people who ju- who have such social anxiety that they just can't get themselves to do anything? What kind of baby steps would you recommend where they would that are that they'll really do, you know? Well, um for me it always goes back to playing it differently in your mind because if you're having social social anxiety, it's because you're telling yourself something. Yes. And then you're believing it. You know what I mean? If you say, well, that's not that way, actually. Just tell yourself a new story. Okay. Yeah, just tell yourself a new story. Um, That's what I loved. I was talking to you guys the other day. I don't know if, or I might have been talking to to Judy in our other group um, about, his name is Jimmy Chin. He, he's this photographer that's really well renowned and um, he had a master class and he was talking in the master class about how much we worry about things that are never going to happen. 90% of what we worry about. True. It, it just is never happened. It's just all you playing in your mind and fear. He said, if you're standing up, cause they, he does like um, uh, these shoots where they go to the top of Everest and then do photo shoots. Right. And, and does all this climbing. Um, he was talking about how you, you're you're worrying about things. And if you just realize that, you know, you're not, you shouldn't worry about these things. You're just playing it in your mind in a particular way. You know, and I said, that is so true. You know, like he was talking about how he uses things on, I, I, I'm a photographer that always wants everybody to do things on manual settings, or I think I'm being lazy if I don't. Right. And um, he was saying that he uses aperture priority and shutter priority. And and I said, I always stay away from those. Now he's on the cover of National Geographics. He's been in um, these major things. And I said, I got to change shift my attitude. You know, yeah. and realize that I'm grinding. My, you can make things into a grind when you don't need to make them into a grind. Right. You know what I mean? Because, um, and that's just like laying bricks. You have to just say, well, if I'm building a building, I'm going to do every little brick at the time. And just say, what can I do? Is He said, just look at your next logical step. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I want to do that with everything. Just say, break it down into steps. So you're not trying to do this whole thing. Just say, what is the first logical step? And then do the next logical step. That's good advice. Yeah. And say, what would help me to feel good when I'm thinking, when I'm thinking of this whole thing of how I feel bad, what is the opposite and what would make me feel good about it? And then how can I fill that in? Just delicately. I love that. Break it down into little, little bite-sized pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So... If people want to go out and about and meet others, mm-hmm. or maybe they they don't really want to, but they think they they probably should. How yeah. would people do that? What's what a, you, do you have any advice on that? Yeah, what you would do, like I said, just play it in your mind in a particular way, and um, tell yourself you're only going to be there for a short amount of time. Um, put yourself together in a way that you feel you're most advantageous, comfortable like you like your appearance and um and and then just say i'm i'm strong enough to be in that setting I'm strong and what what be- kind of what kind of events do you have any examples of types of things people could go do to make themselves like, you easy? know they have meetup events that are meeting in person now okay you know you could um 
you could um, put, decide that you're going to put some friends together for coffee. Yeah. You know, and, and make it just a little larger group than you usually have. Have have three or four people there, but if it, but if you're gonna do it as as comfort, just start with enough people that make you feel comfortable. Yeah. yeah. What are what are some events that you do? What do you, you're always out doing things, and people, yeah, but usually people like don't said, go out and do things all the time, but they want to. So, what kind of things are there available for people to do? That well, like you um, do. Tell us what you do. You're well, always doing things. Well, I get together with friends for coffee. Uh -huh. I um, usually a lot of the events that I do have to do with my uh, readings, you know, okay. or um, you know, I do things with family. And you, you know, like I, like I was telling, you, I go to the Scunzel Gardens. You get into conversations with people. Allow yourself to just have soft conversations and fun with people that might be near you. You know yeah. what I mean? Expansion is very delicate. What you do is you step into it and say, say, what if, you know, do the part that's comfortable and then allow the next part to um, just unfold naturally or organically. Yeah. yeah. What did you do when you were young? For, for, for the people that are trying to get out, what would... Remember when you were young, you were more open. I was so shy. I I was with, oh you were you I were with, shy. like even oh, in class it, like oh you, gosh you, yes you, I would oh, never okay. raise my hand. Okay. And okay. now it's like I would never I would know the answer. You mm -hmm. know when the teacher would say something and I would know the answer and I wouldn't tell. I would I didn't want to I didn't want attention on me. And birthdays. Oh. My parents would want to celebrate my birthday and have people sing. I would mm -hmm. cry. I don't want people singing to me. Oh. I was, oh, I was just terribly shy. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I still am. I'm not that bad, but I was really scared of everything, I think, <laughs> back then. Mm -hmm. So I would hang out with, I think my, well, my parents had friends who had kids. Mm -hmm. So I, when he, they would go visit, I'd meet the kids and I had best friends growing up that way. So um, I don't remember what I did when I was a kid, but I know I I was very shy and I didn't want to do anything by myself. And I was an only child for a while too. And that, oh, was, okay. that was hard okay. too. So I didn't have any siblings around. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it may have helped me to have siblings, you know, because you have yeah. to socialize within the household. You know, yeah. yeah. And in school, uh, like I said, I was so shy in school. Yeah. And yeah. my dad would say, if you don't know something, because I then I would have a question, I wouldn't ask the question. So I would just oh. wing it, whatever mm -hmm. I was trying to do an assignment, I wouldn't ask. But now, oh, yeah. now yeah. I'm the opposite. Now I'm the biggest question asker there is. My dad would be so proud. But yeah. back then he'd go ask questions. And yeah. I'm like, okay. And then I wouldn't, I just wouldn't ask questions. I was too afraid yeah. of what people would think of me if I, if I asked the wrong thing or if I gave an answer that was wrong. Oh yeah. my gosh. I thought I can't do that. So I, even if I thought I knew it, I thought maybe I don't, I'm not saying anything. Isn't that terrible? So yeah. sad. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's um, judgment of yourself and worrying about what other people think all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I, like I said, I'm a work in progress. And what I always do is just say, tell myself a new story. Whenever I'm um, worrying about something, I say, you have to say something new because um, you don't want to believe everything that you think. You, you've heard that right. thing. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> don't believe everything you think and just tell yourself a new story. Yeah. Yeah. And I've done a lot of thought of work. A new story. Because what people are doing in that sense is that they're telling themselves something and then they're believing, whatever you're telling yourself, you're believing it. And then you're acting like it's true. Right. And, yeah. 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 I've luckily over the last, I don't know how many years I've done a lot of thought work. And so mm -hmm. I realized, wait, that's just a thought. I, I don't have to believe that thought. And yeah. then I, I, what's a better thought? Yeah. It doesn't have to go from the extreme left to right, right? It can just be a little better thought. That's believable. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've learned a lot about that. And I'm not as bad as I used to be. But 
yeah, but other people don't know this work and other people are extremely shy and some people won't even go out, you know, mm. they won't leave their houses. They're shy. Mm. They don't know how to yeah. make it better. So, well, you know, when you're, when you're reading, read biographies about people who had to overcome those things because that um, will make you feel not alone. Um, um, tell yourself something new. You know what I mean? Realize that you're telling yourself things and you feel bad because it's not true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And say, I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. You can do it and, and do it in small increments. And I hope yeah, everybody um, understands that and, and maybe we'll try these things. Look at biographies. That's a strong way to change. Look at the people that have overcome. I love that. Yeah. I, love, I I just listened to, um, well, it was autobiography, I guess. Um, the one that Henry Winkler did. Have you listened okay. to that? I listened. No, I didn't no, read it. Not yet. Called, I think it's called Being Henry. Oh, you would not believe what he'd been through all his yeah. life. And it was so entertaining. It was funny. I listened to it everywhere I went. And he had a, has a great voice. So uh -huh. Great to listen to where he came from to where he is now. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful story. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. I liked Mariah Carey's um, book too. Oh. It, because hers is a biography. It's really, really good. You you had no idea the things that she went through. You oh. Know, because she wasn't okay. an only child, but she found herself isolated more because she was a young she was a young child when, and separated from her brother and sister for a period of time. It's, it's good. It's really good. It's when did that good. come out? I don't remember. It, it came out a few years ago. I would say about four years ago. And uh, somebody wrote it about her or did she? No, write? no, she, she wrote it. I think she had okay. a, um, a, somebody that assisted her in the writing. I see. Yeah. But um, like, like she was dictating it to them, you know, that type of thing, but it, it's her biography. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, look it up. It's unbelievable. What about yeah. taking classes? Well, if that works, yeah. sometimes um, for me, getting out and just doing is it works for me. But if you feel do whatever feels comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Each person should do whatever they feel comfortable. Whatever is going to help them with their step by step process. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, and realize that everybody's in their step-by-step -step process. No one, none of us are done with our our unfoldment because new parts of your life take you to a new junction. You know, you've never been this particular age, or you may you may be a person who uh, is an empty nest nester. Right. You, you know what I mean? That's that's new, and you've never been, or you might be newly divorced after being married for twenty two years. You know what I mean? And that's new, and now you know. So we're we're all having to find new ways, finding ourselves at new crossroads, and and it never ends. And it's good yeah. to know that it never ends for all of us. And know? we don't think about all the other people. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. We think about ourselves. Like, we're we're thinking scared, that oh I'm my shy. god, we're going through this, and you look and you say you think other yeah. people are having a grand time. <laughs> right, that's when, what I thought. I thought no, oh, it's no, just other me. other people. Yeah, other yeah. people are 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 yeah. have their daily struggles and things they have to to overcome too. You yeah, know? they sure and new do. challenges that that come up. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to share about this subject that I didn't ask? Just go for it. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. Yeah, that's the main thing. Is that we all have to go for it and. Um, even though you might find yourself being fearful in a moment, know that you can push through it, the new fears that you may be feeling, you know? It's yeah. Just, it's okay. Just say next. Next. Yeah, go back. You read that on the last one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, podcast, I think, let me see. What did we I did say? in October. Podcast 108, The Journey Within. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So look back, That that's so good. Yeah. I love that yeah. one. That's my favorite one so far. Mm -hmm. good. So good. tell tell us, tell everybody, tell the whole world, where can they find you? They can I'll find it in the I'll, show notes. Yeah. Um, they can find me on uh, Facebook at Beverly M. Collins now. 
You can also find me on um, Instagram at Beverly M. Collins Artist. And I'm on X, which used to be called Twitter. It's just Beverly M. Collins, you know? And okay. uh, yeah. And then you have a website, right? Oh, the website is Beverly M. Collins.pixels.com. You can look at my photographs. So like, like one of them is this one. Oh, this one is called Tingle. Oh, and, it, and it's actually um, um, I can change this one a little bit so you can see it. It's another spider. I love my spiders. So that's that was a photograph. Yeah, that was a photograph. Uh -huh. I and called it's a on, spider. It's on your shirt. It's mm -hmm. Oh my, that is really cool. Yeah, my my um, images you can get on canvas. You can get on posters. You can that's get right. them on um, uh, mugs, cups shower curtains, you know, tote bags, you know, <laughs> just go to Beverly M. Collins dash pixels.com. That's a lot of, that's a, that's a mouthful right there, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. That doesn't yeah. look like a photograph though. I know uh, uh, that's the thing when they put, when they put them on the, the um, things, wow. the photograph becomes cloth. Wow, and I love it. Have it on both sides. That's pretty. But it, it's a picture. It was actually a Canon um, photograph. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. Wow, you have you do so much. Thank you. Yeah, and you. you know what? I want to add more. I want to add more and more because uh, it's fun. You know, we're we're supposed to be expanding our entire life. You know. Yeah. Well, you're a very good example for all of us. Thank you so much for coming on the show again. Yeah. Thank you again for having me, Kim. <laughs> yeah. Will you come back again? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Why not? We'll find, we find another, another subject. subject. <laughs> yeah, we'll find another subject and I'll find some pieces for it. <laughs> yes, please. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to your day and I will okay. see you maybe tonight. We'll see. Yeah, maybe. We I mean, you know, I'm actually supposed to be going somewhere tonight, but we okay. will get back again today. Yes, we will. But yeah. And thank you, everybody. Please um, leave a note for Kim. Um, like and subscribe and um, come back and look at her other stuff because it's really good, really insightful. And yeah. Thank you, my little promoter you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, have a good day, Beverly. You too. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.